another round for the Blind Guardian history topics. Again, the old Guardian band and you two. And we want to talk about the albums right now, right? Yeah. So how did you deal with the pro pressure to come up with a new album as soon as you did up? And, I mean, it's, it's not a long period of time between the two albums. We started playing cards. Basically, that's <laughs> around the, the time when we, you know, decided it's about the time to do rehearsals every day to come up with as much songs as possible. But basically what we did in the beginning of this period was playing cards, complaining about whatever, you know, because the record company was not working good enough on the channels of here. Of course, we were a little excited first, you know when the album would be released and, you know, how it would appear to people, how the reaction would be, all that stuff. And, you know, we were sure with Battalions of Fear we would tour the world. And that did not take place, obviously. <laughs> we played a few shows with a band called Grinder and a few single shows here and there. So we would have had plenty of time within the year to create new songs but the first three or four months we did nothing but playing cards you know and jamming and having fun and enjoying ourselves and being stars because we were still in um in that demo band mode we didn't switch to to a really album mode and and being in a in a studio on a regular basis um we didn't realize that and the problem was that when we got the, the contract, we could use all the demo songs. We didn't need to work out so many new songs. It was a few and we took our time, but we were still thinking, oh, we have all the time in the world. And then um, Charlie Renner said, I want the next album within a year. <laughs> and we really didn't realize how short a year would be. <laughs> we, were, we were young and innocent. We were totally innocent. Plus, um, I had an 8 to 5 job. I think you quitted school and did an 8 to 5 job for a while yeah. in your yeah. father's yeah. company. I did you, civil service. You had serious I problems in school yeah. because, you know, you... It was my last year in school yeah. and then at that time. Because, you know, they didn't like that you were a musician and you revealed that to them. Hated it. Yeah, it, it, it was not about revealing it. When we did battalions, I had a couple of people in my class or parallel classes that were doing sports. There was a girl that played tennis a lot and there was some guy that doing golf or whatever. I don't remember. And they got uh, extra holidays whenever they had tournaments or stuff like that. And so uh, I was stupid enough to go to the headmaster and say, you know, we got signed, we got a record deal, and I have to go to the studio for three weeks. And he said, no, you don't, you come to school. And said, see you in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they tried to kick me off school immediately. I, first day I went back to school, I had to go to the headmaster immediately, and then there was a conference with every single teacher. They had to decide about my fate. And just my, my music teacher and my English teacher, they both spoke up for me and said, this guy stays here. And uh, that was a lot of trouble. And for, for uh, when we did follow, uh, we worked around that. My mother worked at a doctor back then, and she gave me a prescription saying I was sick. Obvious, obviously, everybody knew that I wasn't sick, and it got me in more trouble, but I just didn't care. <laughs> no, it was, again, I came back after the studio, and my math teacher was like, oh, are you feeling better again? I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine again. And he was like, come to the blackboard. What did we do last week? Prove this and solve that. I was like, I have no fucking clue. And he was like, okay, F, 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 you can sit down again. <laughs> but then at a certain point, we started songwriting and we felt that the song sounded good. Yeah, there was a change of inspiration. There was a change in the style. We got a little harder. Um, we came up with the first songs. As far as I remember, it was Fast to Madness and Hall of the King. I might be wrong, but I, I, be. I remember that I did uh, some lyrics for them fairly early and as you mentioned Michael Moorcock came in as a substitute for, for Tolkien <laughs> on this album and summer came basically and we had maybe a handful of songs. It was the time that we went to the Dynamo in Netherlands yeah. and we watched the Dynamo festival and there was uh, the newborn testament playing, they just changed from legacy to testament and were playing the first album and was mind-blowing for us. And we said, well, we need to be harder. <laughs> we need to really to be harder and, and have this punch. And um, 
even though that we, we never thought that we would copy this, but we, we only said, okay, let's go for our style, but make it a little bit harder, a little bit more punch. And that was what we did was follow the blind, more in the face, banished from, from Sanctuary is like really speed and faster and harder. And Hansi was singing with a little bit um, different attitude. I know that you had a cold at the time you were, <laughs> <laughs> that you were singing, I always but, had a cold. but we were like, yes, <laughs> he sounds so great now. <laughs> but, now comes the but, we recorded a tape. In, this, in the rehearsal room, that was one of the many rehearsal rooms we have had, went to color prior to the production because we were scheduled, I think, for October 1988, late October, early November, something around that it must have been. And in summer we went there with the songs we have finished. There might be four songs. I'm not sure if Banish was on there, but, but as I said, Hall of the King and Fast to Madness and maybe Dan for a time. And we played the stuff to him and he was shocked. He was completely shocked because he said, I can't judge a rehearsal recording. And we said, well, yeah, maybe you can, maybe you cannot. But we believed he could. So we went there. He was completely shocked. He said, well, you changed your style completely. This sounds like shit. You better go back to the rehearsal room and come up with new songs. And we said, well, calm down, Carla. This is just a rehearsal recording. So we explained him the progression of a song. And we felt very confident about the songs. They, they were more complicated, far more complicated, especially Faster Madness was final warning back then mm. which was like 10 minutes long and not like it ended up on the album so we went back to the rehearsal room and that somehow pushed us so we started songs and we progressed very quickly follow the blind came up because we liked forbidden and we, we, we wanted something of that style in there and fate's warning of course yeah. so it had to be a little more progressive i remember banish might have been composed at that time beyond the eyes and we just felt confident about the songs but you know we would have needed maybe another month and the album would have been even better. Make it six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, we would have played more cards. <laughs> True. The studio was booked and Carla refused to give us more headtime. So we were forced to go into the studio. And during the last week of the songwriting, someone came up with a riffing and we just continued composing. And we said, well, we need a chorus with, you know, almost cheesy cho uh, uh, chorus, like, you know, something with Valhalla or so. And that's how we composed Valhalla. And when Valhalla was ready, you and me considered the song to be the weakest song and ever. we wanted to, s <laughs> the weakest Blind Guardian song ever and we wanted to skip it. Yeah. We didn't want it on the album. But then from the playing time, we had to take it because we didn't have any other material that we could choose. We did not have, yeah. And so we said, okay, then let's put this shitty Valhalla on the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. yeah, but, yeah it's, it is a reality, and I think it happened later on again that we really were not convinced about a song. You usually got a pretty good ear for the songs, which would be, you know, probably yeah. successful. <laughs> yeah, but he was the he was the commercial was the catchy guy, yeah. poser. Yeah. <laughs> any young kid, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, we we did Valhalla, went to the studio, and. Carla obviously recognized that there was more potential to the songs, especially to Banish from Sanctuary. And I, as said, you know, had to do the same thing I did with Battalions. I went to, from Crayford to the studio back and the next day the same thing again. What I can recall is that the recordings went far more professional from our side, not only because of the down tuning and not only because of you playing with the click. I don't know if we kept the schedule, which, you know, ever is... We, you know, we usually n never keep a deadline. We, I, I cannot recall any album, but if, then it was Follow the Blind, where we might have been yeah. you know, on schedule, because everything went smooth. And, um, and that's why this is the weakest album of Blind Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> you know the story. <laughs> it's better not to keep the schedule, but really put some more time in the music. I remember, the funny thing is, because back then, CDs didn't mean anything. We were just you know, keeping our focus on vinyl, on the 38 minutes we needed for vinyl. So this is what we had. And then Charlie said, Charlie Winner said, you need another song because we need to release a CD and a CD needs a bonus track. And but we did. He only came up with this after we finished everything and we were back home already. We were back home. <laughs> and we said, yeah, we're taking care of that. And one fine day, Kalle called us 
and said, you are scheduled for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing cards and rehearsal room and then discussing, yeah, what can we do? And then someone came up, I think it was think you, it was me, demon, yeah. <laughs> with the idea of doing a demon cover version. So we rehearsed that on... We didn't rehearse it. No, not even <laughs> that. <laughs> we didn't. So, we, so we went to the studio and had like one or maybe two days to com accomplish that. But, you know, mission accomplished. It turned out to be... A good song. So let's head over to Taste from the Twilight World. Uh, I guess one of the most important key factors when it came to actually finding the Blind Guardian sound was that you invested in between Follow the Blind and Tales in uh, your own recording equipment. Tell us a bit more about that and how you could use that for your songwriting. Yeah, we had a very nice rehearsal room at that time in the first floor somewhere <laughs> with a window with daylight which uh, I never made use of <laughs> but with real living neighbors yeah, yeah we had a really great room and we bought our first mixing desk and our first 16 track machine which was an unbelievable improvement at that time to have a 16 track recorder it was lots of work to build this little studio because um, we did all the cables and patch base and, and all this by our own and um, yeah bought some little effects as well. We started doing songwriting on this 16 track machine so for the first time we could try out um, guitar orchestrations or Hansi could try out the choirs before we went to the studio. With all the experience we had from the two studio sessions with the two first albums. We brought in um, all the new ideas and tried to write sounds that features these kind of trademarks, like good chorus parts with really nice um, choirs, melodic guitars with layers and double leads and, and everything. And I think like this we were able to really focus this kind of style and create our, our unique style. I would say Tales was the first album that we really established our own unique style. And we covered the expenses by all the income we have had with Follow the Blind, so no one in the band took out any money. It was all invested into the studio recordings and it paid off, obviously. It was definitely the, the step we needed. I remember me and Andre sitting in the rehearsal room one night because he said, so fucking great recording equipment here now, let's do something to him. And we were trying and he was playing. I said, come on, let's just play. And then he said, hey, man, let's record this. This is cool. And that was how Weird Dreams okay. started. Do you remember yeah. this? Yeah. And he was totally in and was like, wait, 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 this part and, and this part. And I was later, because it was so late in the night already, I remember me sitting in front of the mixing console and it, and it started like... <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning, he, hey, Tom, I think I'm almost done with the song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Incredible. That was so funny that night, really. So a new thing was um, that the recording went down in Hamburg this time. But I guess you had not much free time to spend on the city of Hamburg or at the Reeperbahn because you weren't finished with the songwriting yet. Well, that didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we did a pre-production you know, for, for the Tales album. And we went to Duisburg to the uh, SC Sound Recording Studio where we did the demos and recorded at least four or five songs. I cannot recall which ones. Lord of the Rings has been one of those and, of and rings welcome to dying lost in the twilight wall lost. yeah right that's a funny story welcome to dying but we, <laughs> we keep that out um and when we went to the studio it was almost the same situation then with uh, follow the blind we needed one more month in the studio and we were asking for that so we contacted Kalle and we said well Kalle, you know we could need another week or another month at home, you know, to finish songwriting because we knew Tales from the Twilight were, would be something uh, very special and um, there was a very strong energy in, in all of the songs and we just needed one more song. I think it was Last Candle we came up with, the last. It was the last one, yeah. And he refused. He said, you have to come. 
So we went <coughs> to Hamburg or Brackel, which was supposed to be the first production in this studio, which Kalle and his companion Rolf built at that time. We were the first band and went in there and arrived and he said, well, we're not finished, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we were supposed to stay in the studio and we did it because driving back was, you know, something we could not imagine. It was 400 kilometers, the, the opposite direction, you know. So we <laughs> stayed in the studio for four weeks, I think, before we could start with the production. Four weeks? Three or four weeks, you know. And in this time, yeah, we, we took our uh, equipment with because we were not finished. So we could finish the songwriting for Tales from the Twilight World before we started the production. But that's just because color wasn't finished, you know, so we could have possibly finished this album at home and then went to Brake. The rest is history. I mean, Tales, you know, was maybe our breakthrough album. The third album, which was very important, and it all went pretty well for us. You had a great time because the, the studio had a really great sounding drum room. We enjoyed every minute there. So what we did was a lot of jamming, a lot of production, a lot of card playing again. We played a lot of table tennis again and enjoyed ourselves. It was quite a good But there was also the thing he had to leave after his drum recording yes, because exactly. of the lung thing. He yeah. had some problems with his lungs and had to get a surgery. I had to leave directly after the drum recording. Yeah. And uh, the doctors even told me that I don't have to play the album, but I did because we said we want to, to get it done anyhow. The good thing of the production of the tales was that we were so much better prepared than uh, with any album before. I was very pissed with the follow situation that um, we had such a little time to write the songs and it was, I don't know, it, it was not really finished. And then um, with the tales we had this studio system and we really worked every day on the songs. There was not one wasted day Maybe one, yeah, maybe <laughs> two, but beside we were really intense working on the songs. For the first time we were making use of the equipment, we had everything prepared really well. We could try out so many things before. Because of our sound system we were listening to the songs many times and we could see already if there was a, a weak part, which you couldn't find out while, when you were rehearsing with the band. It was a real difference to have everything recorded so detailed. And so we, we threw out more weak parts, we rearranged the songs, we even re-recorded some, some songs, like three different versions, to see um, if a part fits in or not. We, we took lots of work. And so the songs were much, much better prepared when we recorded them in the tales. And I think that's why the, the quality of the album is so much better. We really worked out the songs. It was the first time that we really everything was fixed. We also started working in shifts, I remember. Yes, you know? yes. You quitted uh, civil service, I quitted my job. You quitted civil was, service. Or, at about, some point, you know, I, I was shortly same. after him done. Yeah. So we had, every day, we, we had the typical rehearsal from, let's say, five o'clock in the evening to 10 p.m. or sometimes midnight. Then you stayed in and I came in the morning by around seven, eight, you know, yeah. you left and I, you know, opened up the door and, and started working until we started rehearsing. Yes. So, and that's how we create the songs. So there was always someone in the studio, 24 hours, there was someone of us in the studio working on the songs. Yeah, and we did that almost for 10 years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> So that, that worked out really good and it was a dream to work with this equipment. It yeah. was really, we could try, so do so many experiments. Yeah, it was an amazing time somehow. We were very creative. The creative flow was much better. And yeah, the taste was mind-blowing somehow from everything. The, the atmosphere we had in the studio was so great. The band was getting along well. We had all those nice friends who visited, visited all the time in the studio. There was always kind of party going on while one or two guys were recording stuff. The, the whole feeling we had at that time, the way of living, the whole situation was fantastic in my point of view. And you can hear that this album is really so much energy. It's a flow of energy. It's a very free album, I think. You know, the spirit is completely free-minded. There's 
you know, there are no rules, there, there are no frontiers. It, it's a nice album. And for the first time we had Andreas Marshall as an artwork designer. Oh. And that was mind-blowing as well. When we saw that, the cover artwork, we were flying high in the sky because we knew that would be the punch in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tales was the first album that really, for a lot of people, was like a kind of concept album. But it wasn't a concept album. But it sounded like a concept <laughs> album to, to a lot of people. Huh? Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's... How do you say? It's compact. Like, it's yeah, very compact. It fits, yeah. you know. Each piece seems yeah. to be connected to the next one. Yeah. And, yeah. The cover yeah. just accomplishes the whole image of a just concept magic. album. Yeah. <laughs> That's really magic. Ja, ja. Ja, das ist gut. 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 Ja